The statue of the Hindu goddess of wealth found in Pompeii in Italy. The statue of the Roman god of the seas, Poseidon, found in Kolhapur in Maharashtra. How did these two objects reach these two cities almost 2,000 years ago? Hi, I'm Minnie Menon, and I'm going to tell you of a time when India was at the heart of the global trade network, and Romans couldn't get enough of Indian luxury. There is some debate on whether the Pompey Lakshmi is really Lakshmi or is she a Yakshi or a tree spirit. But her discovery in the ruins of Pompeii, which was destroyed after the volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in Italy in 79 CE, underlined an interesting connection. Trade links that connected the Roman Empire with the Indian subcontinent between the 2nd century BCE and the 3rd century CE. Another famous object that talks back to us from this very exciting period is this 13 cm long statue of Poseidon, the Roman god of the sea, found during the excavations in Brahmapuri in Maharashtra's Kolhapur in the 1940s. Archaeologists found this bronze statue in a jar along with over 150 other Roman trade-linked objects. This find indicated that this area would have been in the path of traders and that perhaps the house belonged to a seafarer or could it have been a Roman settlement? We'll never know. In fact, all through South and Peninsula India, you will find evidence of this Roman trade. Hordes of coins and artifacts found in styles like Kotayam in Kerala, Coimbatur, Karur and Arikamedu in Tamil Nadu and Kolhapur in Maharashtra. In fact, the earliest Greco-Roman coins come from the 2nd century BCE, but trade really picked up around the 1st century BCE when Greek sailor Hippolyus figured that one could use the monsoon winds to sail across the Arabian Sea to the ports of Western India. The turning point for Roman trades with the Indian subcontinent seems to have come around 31 BCE when Rome conquered Egypt. This conquest gave the Romans direct control over the very lucrative eastern trade. The story comes through when you study the huge number of Roman coins found across South India and Peninsula India. For instance, there is a sharp pickup in the number of Roman coins found from the time of Augustus and Nero. In fact, one of the largest hoards of Roman coins was found in Kotayam in Kerala. It consisted of almost 8,000 gold coins held in a large brass jar. The later coins in this hoard came from the era of Roman Emperor Nero, indicating how active trade was in this period. The ports of the west coast of India played a critical role in trade, but as more and more Roman ships came, they also plugged into ports along the east coast of India, which had already emerged as centres of trade along the Bay of Bengal. The main objects Romans bought from the subcontinent were fine cotton, spices especially pepper, pearls and ivory. In fact, around the time when the Pompey Lakshmi and the Poseidon had found their home, there was an angry flare-up in the Roman Senate about the drain of wealth to India. Author Pliny the Elder lamented about how such a lot of Roman wealth was flowing into India because of the insatiable appetite for Indian luxuries in Rome. All of this came to a head in the post-Nero period when civil war gripped Rome. Curbs were then put and taxes imposed on goods from the Indian subcontinent and gradually trade too reduced. There's also another interesting backstory around the Pompey Lakshmi. The inscription etched on the statue in Karoshti indicates that this came from the Gandhara region in present-day Afghanistan. This piece of ivory, perhaps from Peninsula India, would have been sculpted somewhere in Gandhara only to find its way to Pompeii through one of the ports controlled by the Satvahanas. These figures sure had quite a journey and by retracing their path, we can learn so much about how the world was so connected 2,000 years ago.